Hey everybody, Chris Serena here with Sultana Education Foundation's Virtual Classroom. Today we're going to be showing you a really famous and really cool image by artist John White of the town of Pamiak. Now John White was one of the, one of the founding members of the ill-fated colony of Roanoke, and he, he traveled to the outer banks of what we today would call North Carolina in 1585 and made this watercolor image part of a series of watercolor images he made of the Carolina Algonquins. Uh, what we'll do is kind of take you around this image and show you some of the salient features of this community. I will begin. So we'll start with this town is surrounded by a defensive wall known as a palisade. So what this indicates, which is very interesting, is that these native people were definitely fearful of raids, whether it was from other tribes, right? So. Think of the work that it would have taken in a, in a land without steel tools to cut down and delimb and then dig post holes for all of these trees. That gives you an indication that there was warfare amongst local tribes and perhaps regionally as well. You can see here there's one entrance in and one entrance out. So that, again, is for defensive purposes. And the artist in this case left gaps between the poles so we could see into this scene. In real life, that would have been really tight and made it really, really hard to get into. Another thing that's kind of neat is this communal fire. So we know that in a lot of Native American communities, there was a central fire pit that might be used for religious ceremonies. It might be used to cook large stew pots and have a communal meal. So those are just a couple images. To show you the rest of this image, I'm going to introduce you to my friend and colleague, Mr. John Mann. All right, thanks, Chris. So. In this painting, we can see a lot of houses kind of tightly clustered together in this circle. So this was obviously a group of people that needed to rely on each other for survival, strength in numbers. And as you look at these houses, these long houses, some of them we can almost see inside. They've left the side open. Either the artist did that for our benefit, or it was actually the, the siding was able to be removed and then restored. So these long houses, would have been formed using bent saplings um, lashed together at the, at the crosses. And then the outsides would have been covered either in mats of grass or even uh, bark from trees. You can see some different size houses, but they're all generally the same shape with the exception of this one in the top right corner. Um, you might be able to notice it's got this pointed or domed roof. Uh, and so that was actually a special place that was a ceremonial house where they would gather for special important gatherings would take place in that place so it was it was made to stand out from the rest as we look at what some of these people are doing on the lower part of the portion we see a native american holding a bow that's quite a bit taller than he or she is um, so that's pretty significant there we're seeing a long bow we see a native american man appears to be shaping a log um, using a stone axe, which we profile in one of our other videos. He might actually be making a repair to go on the fencing that goes around the outside of this village. Uh, and then perhaps one of the uh, most fun details of this picture is there's actually a small dog up in this picture. So they actually had domesticated dogs living in their village, probably for many of the same reasons people do today. Um, but chief among those might have been security. If you're all sleeping at night and someone's creeping around the outside of this village, that dog might be your first warning. So we've got lots of great details going on in here uh, and just a glimpse of what it might, might have been like a uh, typical daily life in one of these Native American villages. This would have been on the outer banks of North Carolina, but these Native people were living a very, very similar lifestyle and had a very similar cultural culture to the Indians living here on the Chesapeake Bay. That's all for today's virtual classroom. I hope you'll join us for some more cool videos.